This is Mr. Martin. These are video notes for pre-calculus advanced. Uh, we're going to look at graphing tangent and cotangent today. Uh, a little bit different than graphing sine and cosine. Some similarities, but uh, quite a few differences. So first, let's take a look at uh, the tan values for tangent and cotangent on the unit circle. So here's uh, two copies of our unit circles with our quadrant angles labeled. Um, I'm going to do one more thing over here. I'm going to label this here negative pi over 2 because if I go all the way around in a clock counterclockwise and get there it's 3 pi over 2 but also I can go in a clockwise direction or a negative direction and get there and then it would just be negative pi over 2 so that negative pi over 2 is really the value that we're going to use so if you recall tangent is sine over cosine so sine x over cosine x and if we're talking about values on the unit circle, the sine is the y-coordinate and the cosine is the x-coordinate. Let's change these to uh, thetas. Let's make that a theta so we don't have the same x's. So theta is just some angle, and we know that the tangent is just the ratio of uh, the y-coordinate over the x-coordinate. If you're thinking about it in terms of triangles, it's the opposite over the adjacent, but that's our tangent. And then for cotangent, that's the reciprocal of it. So that would be the cosine theta over the sine of theta. And again, if we're talking about coordinates on the unit circle, that would be the x-coordinate over the y-coordinate. So let's go through and look at the uh, tangent and cotangents at each of these quadrant angles. So starting over here uh, with uh, zero radians or zero degrees, um, my y over x is going to be zero over 1, so that's 0. Let's go ahead and change these to red so they stand out a little bit. So 0 over 1, which is 0. Over here, y over x is 1 over 0, so that's going to be undefined. We can't divide by 0. And then over here, I've got 0 over negative 1, so that's also 0. And then down here, I've got negative 1 over 0. Again, can't divide by 0, that's undefined. So notice up here at pi over 2 and down here at negative pi over 2. Okay, pi over 2, negative pi over 2. Again, we're not going to use that 3 pi over 2, although you could, but uh, I prefer to use the negative pi over 2. These are the values that it's undefined, and this is going to be important for us, so keep that in mind. Now moving over to cotangent, that's x over y. So this is going to be 1 over 0, x over y. So that's going to be undefined. And then up at the top here, it's going to be x over y. So that's 0 over 1. So that's going to be 0. Here we're going to have negative 1 over 0. So again, dividing by 0, that's undefined. And then down here I have 0, x over negative 1, y. So that's going to be 0. And again, we've got these two spots over here at pi where we're undefined and over here at zero where I'm undefined. So we can see that tangent and cotangent are undefined in um, kind of the opposite places. So we've got pi over two and negative pi for tangent and then the other two spots, the other two quadrant angles, uh, zero and pi for cotangent. Okay, so again, Notice where each is undefined. This is a major key to graphing these. So the spots where it's going to be undefined are where we're going to have asymptotes. Okay, where tangent and cotangent are undefined, we're going to have asymptotes. All right? Now, in order to graph these, we need to be able to find where the asymptotes are. We're going to find two consecutive asymptotes, two asymptotes that are next to each other. So we've got our standard forms. We've got f of x is equal to d plus a tan bx minus c, or we've got f of x is equal to d plus a cotan bx minus c. So when we're looking for the asymptotes, we're really looking at this bx minus c part. All right, we want to see when the stuff that I've highlighted here after the tangent and the cotangent, when is that going to give us an undefined value? 
So in order to do that, we for the tangent, we're going to take the bx minus c, and we figured out that up at the top and the bottom, it's undefined. So we're going to set the bx minus c equal to pi over 2 and negative pi over 2. And once we do that, we're going to have two equations. We just solve it for x, and we'll do some examples in a minute. So when all of this stuff is pi over 2, that's going to be an x value that will make the tangent undefined. When all of this stuff is negative pi over 2, it will give us a value of x where all of this is also undefined. All right, and then for cotangent, we're going to take the bx minus c, uh, c and we're going to set it equal to 0 and pi. Okay, and then again, once you have those two equations where whatever your bx minus c is, you set it equal to 0, you have an equation. You set it equal to pi, you have an equation. Again, then solve for x. So if this isn't very clear, let's uh, take a look at uh, some examples of just finding asymptotes. This is just one part of graphing tangent and cotangent. So for this first problem, the bx minus c, okay, that's x minus pi. All right, and since we're looking at tangent, we're going to take that x minus pi and we're going to set it equal to pi over 2 and we're going to take that x minus pi and set it equal to negative pi over 2 and then we just solve both of these for x. Now I want to uh, caution you to be really careful with your algebra here. It's easy to make silly mistakes. So um, you know if you're having trouble don't skip any steps. Uh, convert to common denominators if you need to. So I'm going to solve for x by adding pi to both sides. So this is really 2 pi over 2. So I have a common denominator. Those go away. And I've got x is equal to 3 pi over 2. So that's one of my asymptotes. And then once I start graphing, I will go ahead and graph that asymptote uh, using my distance between key points. I could locate that and we'll graph it. But we'll look at that in a minute. Add pi, add pi. Again, this is really 2 pi over 2. If you want to find a common denominator, those cancel out. And we're left with x is equal to negative pi over 2 plus 2 pi over 2 is pi over 2. So here are two consecutive asymptotes. All right, let's take a look at the next one. For this one, I have 2 minus 3 tan 2x minus pi over 4. So for this, my bx minus c is equal to 2x minus pi over 4. And I'm going to take this and I'm going to set it equal to pi over 2 because it's a tangent. And I'm going to set it equal to negative pi over 2 and solve both of those. So I have 2x minus pi over 4 is equal to pi over 2. And to get another asymptote that's next to this one, I'm going to take 2x minus pi over 4 and set it equal to negative pi over 2. So I'll add pi over 4 to both sides. Let's see, this would be uh, 2 pi over 4 if you need a common denominator to help you. So I have 2x equals uh, 3 pi over 4. I'll divide both sides by 2. And I get x is equal to 3 pi over 8. So there's one asymptote. Once I solve this one, I'll have another asymptote that's right next to it. So add pi over 4 to both sides. I'm going to change that to negative 2 pi over 4. So I have 2x equals negative 2 pi over 4 plus 1 pi over 4 is negative pi over 4. Divide both sides by 2. And I get x is equal to negative pi over 8. Again, two consecutive asymptotes. All right, so that's two examples for finding asymptotes for tangent. Let's move on and... Uh, find them for cotangent now. So again, we want to take a look and see what is our bx minus c. So bx minus c is going to be x minus pi. So now, since we're looking at cotangent, cotangent is undefined at different spots. So I've got x minus pi, and we're going to set it equal to 0, because that's one of the spots cotangent is undefined. And we're going to take x minus pi and set it equal to pi. That's the other spot on the unit circle that cotangent is undefined. So I'll solve both of these for x. 
add pi to both sides, so I get x is equal to pi, add pi to both sides over here, and I get x is equal to 2 pi. And again, I have two consecutive asymptotes. I'll graph these using my distance between key points, and then I can continue on, and we'll look at that again uh, in a little bit. All right, this last one, again, my bx minus c is 2x minus pi over 4. So if you notice, 1 and 2 were the same as 3 and 4, except instead of uh, tangent, I had cotangent. And you can see it does change my asymptotes. So here I've got 2x minus pi over 4 is equal to 0. And I've got 2x minus pi over 4 is equal to pi because we've got cotangent, so we want to set it equal to 0 and pi. All right, add pi over 4 to both sides. I get 2x is equal to pi over 4. Divide both sides by 2, and I get x is equal to pi over 8. Again, add pi over 4 to both sides. I can make this 4 pi over 4, so it has a common denominator. Those cancel out. I get 2x is equal to 5 pi over 4. Then when I divide by 2, I get x is equal to 5 pi over 8. So there are the two consecutive asymptotes for my cotangent problems. All right, again, if you had any questions uh, on how to find those, make sure you ask. If you can't do this, uh, you won't be able to graph tangent and cotangent. So now that you can find consecutive asymptotes, you're going to be ready to get graphs. So um, we're going to find A, B, C, and D. We're going to find period, phase shift, vertical shift, distance between key points. Uh, you'll find two consecutive asymptotes. Then graph the asymptotes. Okay. So once you find your asymptotes, go ahead and graph them. And then you'll go back and do your chart. So um, did you notice anything missing from this list of things up here? Okay, if you didn't notice the amplitude, amplitude, amplitude was missing. Since that when we look at the graphs, you'll see that they go up and down forever, so they really don't have an amplitude, so we don't uh, calculate that. There's another key difference that we'll talk about before I end this video. Um, with sine and cosine, the period. Every time when we find the period, we do 2 pi divided by b. Okay, but with tangent and cotangent, it is different. Okay, the period for tangent and cotangent is just pi over b. Okay, notice just pi. Okay. So uh, that's a really common place to make a mistake. If you make that 2 pi over b when you're graphing tangent and cotangent, you're going to have some issues. All right, so uh, that's the end of this video. Uh, in the next video, we're going to look at a couple of examples of uh, graphing tangent. If you have any questions, uh, make sure that you write those down or go ahead and pause the video and ask me if you happen to be watching in class. And we'll see you next time.